Mangroves are mysterious trees. Their tangled root system is home to many species. Offshore, they form tree islands where birds roost. They are one of the few species of trees that can survive in saltwater. In recent years, scientists have been working to understand the link between mangroves and human society. We just didn't know the value of mangroves. What, what do they do? What, was the, what, what is the work that mangrove does for society? In the 1970s, Robert Twilley was a young scientist working on his PhD at the University of Florida. One of his professors at the University of Florida, Ariel Lugo, suggested he study mangroves. Ariel Lugo offered uh, an opportunity for me to work in the mangroves here at Rookery Bay. And so I uh, jumped on that as a topic for my dissertation and the rest is history, as they say. Dr. Twilley went to Rookery Bay in southwest Florida to work on his dissertation. Here, he began working with Dr. Bernie Yokel. Working with Bernie, and, and it was just phenomenal. He was a great mentor. At the time, Dr. Yokel was working on a baseline study on Rookery Bay. One of his key findings was how water upstream affected Rookery Bay and the surrounding mangrove forest. Rookery Bay is an estuary. You must keep your watershed reasonably clean and functioning properly. That is absolutely crucial to the life uh, of a healthy estuary. Research done by Bernie Yokel, Ariel Lugo, Robert Twilley, and others has advanced our understanding of mangroves and their importance. These forests, they take excess carbon from the atmosphere and store it in their wood, or they store it in the soil. Now we know other functions. They remove nutrients. They're very important in storm surge and during hurricane season, and they can knock down waves. They can protect shorelines from eroding. Uh, they can protect housing that's behind the trees. So they have a lot of functions that they play in the coastal zone. You know, they're a pretty good value proposition for a society. Some of the earliest studies on mangroves took place at Rookery Bay and, even today, are cited as important baseline studies. Furthermore, early research at Rookery Bay was essential in protecting the area. It turned out that Bernie Yokel's research that had been done here at Rookery Bay was instrumental in convincing our partners in NOAA that Rookery Bay was really the place to, to focus on the designations. 1978, the United States government created the Rookery Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve, dedicated to long-term research and preservation of this ecosystem. Land managers at Rookery Bay use research to find better ways to protect and manage mangrove forests in the reserve. So we have to understand that we're not just managing for mangroves today, we're managing for mangroves 50 years in the future. The more information we have about how valuable mangroves are, it helps us protect them better. Also, Rookery Bay Research Reserve has partnered with other entities in an effort to better understand and protect mangrove ecosystems worldwide. In 1997, Rookery Bay began a partnership with Shanku Mangrove Nature Reserve in China. Places like Shanku Mangrove Nature Preserve and Rookery Bay Research Reserve are vital to our understanding of mangrove ecosystems. It's very hard for us to really understand sometimes, you know, why do we keep these landscapes, particularly the huge amounts of acreage that now is in the Rookery Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve. And you can't get that perspective unless you have protected lands and you have education and outreach facilities and you watch nature do its thing. And if we don't understand that, then you really have no understanding of what you're gonna lose unless you know what they actually can do.